Welcome to Edinburgh Napier University MBA webinar. My name is Helen Sparopoulos and I'm the Admissions Manager at Stafford Global. And joining me this evening all the way from the university is Mamed. Uh, good evening to you, Mamed. Good evening to you too, Helen. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm coming here from a little bit of a rainy UAE. Um, wow. Yeah, so we we quite privileged to have some good rain in the in the last uh, couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I'm also looking here on my right hand side, and I can see that we have quite a few people that have joined us uh, throughout the Middle East as well as from Africa. So That's good fantastic. evening to you this evening. Um, how we're going to conduct uh, our webinar this evening is I'm briefly going to introduce you to Stafford and what our functions are. And I'm then going to hand you over to Mamed, who's going to take you through the MBA program. And right at the end of the presentation, I will have the opportunity to look through any questions that you would like to ask me or Mamed. Um, I am going to look at these questions quite carefully. I'm going to group them together. Um, so a lot of the questions uh, that you ask are identical. So do listen out uh, for that all important answer to, to your question. Okay, so let's get started. So who is Stafford? Well, Stafford was established in 1993 and we are a resource center for distance learning education in the Middle East as well as in Africa. Now we're currently the resource center for six UK universities, one of which is Edinburgh Napier University. We do offer a variety of programs ranging from certificates to diplomas, bachelors, MBAs, MSCs right through until doctorate. So we really do have all the programs that would suit your personal and your professional needs. Now, our aim here at, at Stafford is to assist you throughout your application process and to ensure that you get that very important unconditional offer. So the mere fact that you're with us this evening means that you have already been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants. Now, we also do offer some uh, academic as well as uh, administrative support. So you're very welcome to, to stay in touch with us, even though you do become a student of the university. Now I'm going to hand you over to Mamed and I shall join you towards the end of the webinar. Over to you, Mamed. Thank you, Helen. Thank you very much. Hello, good evening and welcome to um, Edinburgh Napier University, albeit virtually. As Helen uh, mentioned earlier on, and um, one of the members of staff at the university, and uh, my uh, my role is I've got a number of roles. I'm a bit of a hybrid, but my main role here is the director of the suite of MBA programs that we, we've we've got over in um, our university, and suite of our global online are one of the uh, ones that are within the portfolio. What I'm hoping to do this evening is to really give you a very quick background about what, where we all come from, where Scotland is geographically, for those of you guys who are not very familiar with uh, uh, where Scotland's uh, situated, um, give you a bit of background about the university and go into providing you with a synopsis of uh, what the suite of all global online programs, both generalists and specialists are all about. I'm going to try to wrap it up very quickly because I'm more eager to have a discussion with yourselves, be it as a group or as one-to-one, -one, in order to answer your questions. And I'm sure, as usual, Helen's team would, uh, will give you access to, to my presentation. And in the future, if you have any questions with regards to this evening's session, please don't hesitate to either contact me directly or, as Helen mentioned earlier on, uh, contact um, the consultants uh, we have over at Stafford and they, they would try to accommodate you the best way, uh, the best way they can. Edinburgh Napier University is part of, you know, Edinburgh is part of Scotland, the capital of Scotland rather, and Scotland is part of the United Kingdom and um, is a country in itself, but in the same time has quite a, a substantial level of dependency uh, towards the United Kingdom. 
But as far as the nation's concerned and the education's concerned, we are still a British university and um, all the regulations that we adhere to are very much based on QAA, which is the British-based uh, qualifications. Edinburgh itself is a fantastic city. Uh, I don't know if any of you chaps and chapters has had an opportunity to, uh, <clears throat> to spend any time here before. To me, it's one of the most dynamic uh, cities I've ever come across. And uh, Daily Telegraph very recently um, voted Edinburgh the best city in the past three years. And, and that is the best city in the United Kingdom, of course. We are home to 100, uh, more than 100 FTSE um, startup companies, uh, home to the largest art festival in the world, which uh, it normally runs during the course, course of uh, month of August. This what's on the screen in front of you at the moment is our business school. Is a picture of our business school. That's where my office is, and uh, I have a privilege of uh, talking to you uh, this evening from these offices. Um, we have an open plan policy. We have an open door policy, and the university is uh, quite a large open plan um, set, and uh, we try to be as um, accessible to our students as possible. And that more or less advocates the importance of us getting the number one place uh, in the Guardian for nurturing student talent. Because one of the things that we concentrate on at, at the university is not only just to be educator, but in the same time to allow our students to have the experience that is going to enable them to, uh, to take on board what they have and somehow transfer that knowledge and understanding that they developed during the course of the studies with us into, into the profession and into their own private lives as well. Uh, we have a number of um, awards. We've, we are continuous, the bases receive awards. And one of the ones I'm really, really proud of um, is our employability rate. We currently sit that down to about 95%. And what that means is our graduates within six months of qualifying with us, they either into another post or they find a post or they're going to further in the studies. And that employability rate of graduate employability of 95% is something which we should be proud of. And what that really means is organizations, both local and global, are aware of the way we educate and develop our students. Not only we educate you, but we give you the ability to transfer that knowledge into practice, KIP, as, as we call it. We currently have around about 20,000 students in more than 130 different countries. Just short of 14,000 of our students study here in Edinburgh, within our three campuses, business school being one of them. And uh, around about 6,000 students of ours are studying with us in our partner universities uh, throughout the globe. Over and above that, we've got around about 3,000 students who are studying purely online with us. They, they don't, uh, and those 3,000 fit within the, within the 6,000 figure. The Global Online really it was designed, we designed and developed this about 10 years ago. It's, it's to purely to give professionals globally um, accessibility to education, just in time education, to the extent where previously, if anybody wanted the same type of education, they had to literally travel to the United Kingdom to acquire that qualification. And thanks to advancements in technology and uh, I suppose the global connectivity, we, we, we've managed to, uh, to really capture uh, the imagination of quite a number of nations. And we currently have just over 100 uh, different nationalities studying with us um, with the actual global online programs. Although the university has over 130 different nationalities, I've got some catching up to do. We've got about 20 or 30 other nations to, um, to try to, to study global online with us. And the reason the numbers with online uh, programs or the number of nations studying individuals from the nations is less than 
uh, the ones that come here it's purely because some some individuals have the capabilities abilities the time you know to come and, and, and spend here here with us we do have a fantastic global exposure there as far as the suite of our MBA programs are, programs are concerned and that's something which again is going to give an added value to our students because not only you become educated, not only you have the capability to transfer that knowledge to practice, but in the same time, you become a networker because you will be having uh, friends and fellow students who are going to be alumni, alumni like yourselves throughout the whole globe, which is something, again, creates an accessibility to yourselves at personal level uh, globally. When we put together the program, we started with a generalist program and um, plus two specialisms. And the reason we've decided to, to really, first of all, put together the generalist program was purely because quite a number of professionals that, that, that don't want to be defined or the qualification to be defined within, by their own profession or with, by their own specialisms. And that's how we started that. And and really, the, the, the program consists of six compulsory modules um, plus scope and study module, which is allows individuals to um, to really put the proposal forward for the project, the final project for the okay. thesis they're going to be writing. And by having you screen at the screen at the moment gives the breakdown of that. However, throughout the last ten years, we've develop more and more um, specialist projects or specialist programs and their programs based on a supposed supply and demand. As our exposure globally got wider and wider, the more and more professionals on the globe wanted to be much, much more specifically educated with the gas known specialism. However, in the same time, they wanted to know the engine of innovation and management and hence the creation of this specialist actual, uh, the, 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 the roots as we call it. And any of the students who decide to, to take on the specialist roots, then obviously uh, they, they'll be still be studying four out of the six modules that we have within our generalist route, the engine part, as I, called, as I mentioned earlier on. And the remaining two modules uh, will really go into the specialist subject, and those two modules in our minds aren't sufficient enough for an individual to be titled as an, as a specialist, be it leadership, be it information systems, be it project management, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Over and above to those two modules, the scope and study that the students have to um, submit, i.e., the research proposal has to be within the specialist subject area, and also the final piece of work, the thesis has to be based on the specific specialism as well. So in essence, 100 out of 180 credits that you have to be study is going to be based on the specialist subject area. So that makes you truly the specialist within your field. Uh, as far as interactive online resources are concerned, we have a number of, uh, number of, uh, I suppose, Moodle platform. I do beg your pardon, my phone rang and it just, I just um, got distracted for a second. We've got enough on our Moodle platform in order to enable you to be able to deal with us, to work with us to a level that you, you need to without having to come to the classrooms with us. Our interactive online resources are designed for you to access us anytime, any place, anywhere with any mobile device that you have, be it your iPad, be it your iPhone, be it your smartphone, be it your PC, so on and so forth. And the objective behind having that flexibility for you is, is to really, for you to be able to, to more or less design your own learning, uh, development and educational trajectory as far as the duration of the study are concerned, and hopefully to be able to fit your education with your professional and private life. 
To do that, we make absolutely sure that you have access to every material that is uh, needed for you to study with us online. You have academics who deal with you online on a regular basis. We have videos, we have uh, sessions, with lectures, uh, guest speakers, so on and so forth, who would really uh, help you step by step in order to, 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 to move yourself forward. And what you have in front of your screen at the moment, uh, in effect, are the snapshot, screenshot of three of our uh, interactive uh, online resources to give you a good understanding of what we're all about. We start all our successful applicants with an induction program. The students will uh, go onto the, our website, our Moodle platform, and they get inducted into the program. They get a welcome from myself and the academic team. And uh, in the same time, they will be, will be given a timetable. Just because you are thousands of miles away from us, that doesn't mean you, you can interact with us or come into surgery sessions with us. Each module will have its own weekly interactive uh, surgery sessions where um, the virtual office hours when you, you go online and you literally join the classroom with the other fellow students. And if you have any questions to ask, for example, students or whatever, what you will tend to do is to, 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 to work with those individuals uh, and, and work with the academic in the same time in order to make sure that you're, uh, you're uh, well informed of what you've been doing. However, the very essence of education, uh, online education, and especially at master's level, is for you guys to really have a good understanding of what you know. Because at your level, really, our job is not just fully educate you, but in the same time, help you remember what you already know. So part of your job is to help you forget what you already know. The other part is to help you remember what you already know. And you might think, well, why should I have to forget what I already know? Because at times, at senior level, in order for you to learn something, you have to unlearn other things. I remember, I've been an old man, I remember when I started uh, using computers, the system I used was called MS-DOS. MS-DOS is totally different to Windows 10, which I use at the moment. And in order for me to be able to, to use um, uh, Windows 10, I had to forget what MS-DOS was all about because it wasn't at all fit for purpose. And what's the point of having that sitting in my mind and uh, just taking space for absolutely no reason. So these are the, the things that psychologically we try to, uh, to, to help you to develop yourselves and move yourselves forward. So you will be introduced to the program. You will have direct access to all global online resources. You can go to the library, you can access books, every single book, that, a core textbook that you have to study with your module, we, um, provide you with online and you also have a weekly surgery session as I mentioned earlier on. But the books are large. The books that you have to deal with a lot. I've just given you an example of it. You know, a book this size, you know, and you have to probably have two core textbooks of this size each to study every uh, every semester. And you might think, oh my goodness, that's far too much. So what we've done is we've broken those books down into 12 units and every week we give you a synopsis of what each topic area is all about. And I have an example, a hard copy example here with me of one particular book which you have online access of that. So what we do is we turn this into bite-sized weekly reading and we give you a synopsis of that. And we talk to you about it. We, uh, you come to your session, you have, come to your surgery session to really have a conversation with the academic and also with other fellow students. And we give you a breakdown of what the engine is all about. And you test yourself with that. And then end of each week, you test, you have what we call end of unit progress test. You test yourself to, to try to establish really whether you fully understand, not only developing knowledge, but understanding of what the whole thing is all about. And that then, when you access the chapter in the book, it makes it much, much more accessible. And that's something which the feedback we get from the students is that they find it extremely useful. And that bite-sized part of trying to make everything one step at a time to move things forward. And in order for us to award you or reward you, 
to do things bite size and to really try to interact with uh, with the modules that you study on, on a regular basis, the end of unit progress test that we get you to do yourselves, on successful completion of each one of them, which is normally about 10, 10 of them, 10 to 11 of them, the grade on those end of unit progress tests can actually contribute to up to 10% of your final grade for, for your particular module, which is a fantastic motivator as far as I'm concerned. The units, the 11 units, and they all have learning outcomes, they have introductions, they got prescribed readers, they got self-assessment, so on and so forth, and something which has just uh, been given you the, um, the background of. And further reading, readings are fundamentally important. Um, and that's something which I think is so fundamental for you to, to appreciate and to be aware of. Because it's not just about having knowledge, it's about having the understanding and having what's about what I call a depth and a breadth of knowledge and understanding. I remember when I was studying or when I uh, published my first paper, uh, academic paper about 19, 20 years ago, the professor who was guiding me, Professor Bob Hay, said to me, Mama, don't get carried away with yourself just because you've written a little book or published a little paper. Because what you know, you might be able to put in the book, but what you don't know, you find in a library. Go and find out what's in a library. And that's, I think, one of the best lessons uh, late Professor Bob Pei gave to me. And I'm very indebted uh, to him for actually opening that mental door for me. So really, ultimately, it's all over to yourselves. Standard framework, discussion topics, case studies, assessments, outline solutions, weekly web and virtual office hours. I've talked about all of this already with yourselves. So these are all the helping hands that we have to give you hands up. Ladies, gentlemen, we don't give our students handouts. You do not require handouts. You're a professional individual. What you're seeking are hand ups. How somebody to try to project you further into your, into your uh, actual profession or uh, developing yourself further to launch yourself into a new new profession. So a calendar of the academic year is what you have on the actual monitor at the moment. And I think at your level, you probably know the, the, the basics of that anywhere, because in order for you to be part of this webinar, uh, you've already studied at undergraduate level equivalent, so you know how it works. The difference being, because you're studying online, because you're professionals, Professionals don't take three months time off work every year. So why should they take three months off work, off studies every year? So we created what we call trimesters rather than semesters. Whereas those of us who study traditionally, we used to have two terms, two semesters, uh, say August to, to December, September to December, December to May, and we used to have some holidays. With this particular program, you don't have that. You have trimesters, you have three terms, in order to maintain that ongoing learning and joined up thinking. That's again come purely from our students, the same that really don't want to take a huge break from, from the studies. So the introductory videos, etc. etc., are all again on, on your screen at the moment. And the Moodle platform is something that's gonna that's really gonna guide you through through whatever is needed in order to get you there. And every unit, every week, everything is broken down to those little bite size. Because what we don't want you to is to have a daunting thought of, oh my goodness, how am I going to manage that? It's about really taking one step at a time, reflecting, taking one step at a time, reflecting. And allowing time for yourself. So you need to really find minimum 15 hours per week for reflection and for studies for uh, over and above what we're giving you. Because what you're becoming eventually, you're going to become a master in your own field. field. And that MBA means you're the master. That people have to come to you for advice. In order to do that, you have to have a broader knowledge and understanding and become a critical thinker. It's that critical thinking that enables you to really be able to uh, not uh, transfer that knowledge into practice. So some of the 
examples of how we interact with students, so on and so forth, on a regular basis. On operational matter, we've got, you've got a module, that you've got myself, you've got a program uh, uh, management team, you've got administrative management team, you've got administrators, you've got pro, uh, uh, acad academics who support the module leader, the online tutors, and the whole team come together collectively to accommodate all your needs. And you got to bear in mind, going back on before I hand over to Helen, what Helen said right at the beginning, you've got to remember you've got Helen and her team to give you that pastoral support that you require and to give you the administrative support, so on and so forth, be it trying to unlock some of the questions you have in your own mind as to whether or not the right program is the program you choose is the right program for you or how to develop your study skills how to develop your academic vocabulary how to really get into the culture of education and we've got all of that on our website anyway but what helen's team would do is direct you guide you in order to achieve what you want to achieve. Because really, our success is your success. In order for us, both at the Monepe University and Stafford Associates to be successful, our students have to be successful. We are not giving individuals education, we are education providers. Our students earn that education because it belongs to them once that provision is given, is, is passed on. And, and really is over to yourselves. And it's that ethos that we have makes our employability rate so high because organizations know that our students, our graduates have the capability to transfer the knowledge into, into practice, into something tangible. In order for you to join the cohort of our current students and eventually become an alumni of the Manope University, uh, by being a master in your own field, you have to have at least an honours degree, 2-2 level or higher, and plus plus two years of relevant, relevant work experience. But MBA by its own nature at times accommodates individuals who may not have that first degree, who may not have that honours degree, and what we do is we we look at the portfolio, that's where Helen's team comes into guidance um, of each one of you individually. On individual basis, we look at what you've done, your own personal development portfolio at organizational level, whether you've done any other programs or the other courses, in-house, et cetera, et cetera. What your level of work experience is, and uh, because quite a number of individuals that learn so much through their own personal developments and through the, via the management skills, so on and so forth, through years of management and leadership. The, and, and we value those, we value those as well as, as much as we value academic qualifications. So on an individual basis, we look at your, your um, and I suppose whether or not whether we can bring you into a, a university to study with us. So don't be surprised that if you're working with a fellow students who, who may not have a degree, but he or she may have 10 or 15 years managerial experience as a senior manager or a leader, because they, those capabilities, they manage to, to prove to us that is equally as good as sufficient. We've got some decent student feedbacks from our students, and that's something which you put a smile on my face. It's something which it makes us proud. The, the life, the technology these days, it, it, it's so, in a way, exposes us to uh, to feedback, be it both negative and positive. And when students um, give us feedback and they thoroughly enjoyed what they've done, they've really enjoyed the life experience, they enjoy the education experience, etc. etc. That gives us that self satisfaction, a mm -hmm. sense of sense of achievement. So you're helping us actually in order to, to develop our own sense, sense of achievement as as academics. As far as tuition fees are concerned, that's something which I'm going to you know, ask Helen, my colleague uh, or from Stafford, to give you a breakdown of that and what the whole thing is all about. Fees are payable by installments, so on and so forth. I am not at all familiar with the uh, exchange rate today compared to yesterday, so on and so forth. And that's something which I'm going to uh, 
uh, shortly hand over to Helen and then between myself and Helen we're going to try to answer any questions you have if you're seeking clarity from what I've said and please please ask questions if you haven't understood what I'm saying it's not because you didn't understand it it's because I haven't explained myself properly so I apologize in advance ask me the question and I'll do the very best I can to, to, to accommodate you with a hopefully an appropriate answer. So I hand over to Helen now and between us we're going to try to help you as much as we can. Over to you Helen. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mamed. That was very, very yeah. informative. And yes, I have been looking at the questions in the meantime, and I've already started grouping them. Um, I can see that there are two or three questions that relate to external um, accreditation. Um, yes. And the question is, uh, I, I know that I have been informed that your MBA will be AACC accredited. When do you expect this to be finalized? We are extremely confident at the moment we would be done with ASCSB. The process with ASCSB is quite a long, long-winded process because it's not just about the qualification we have, it's about student experience, about password, it's about sustainability, it's about employability, etc. 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 We've been involved in developing the portfolio for a number of years now. Uh, the period normally is between three to five years. We are almost at the end of the tunnel and uh, we are submitting our application, final application to um, ASCSB sometime during the course of next academic year. And uh, I can't give a specific answer because I don't have the glass ball, but I really sincerely hope and I have a personal confidence, that's me, not the university, that by the time current students, i.e. yourselves, fellow uh, applicants, uh, you complete your MBA with us, then we should be able to hopefully to say we do have that badge. Good, excellent. And um, I do not wish to fail this MBA, so I would like your advice. Should I take one or two modules per trimester? First of all, Helen, as you know, you probably guessed what my answer would be. Failure is not an option. Uh, we're dealing with professionals. We have a very, very high pass rate. However, at times, due to the professionals, individuals, circumstances, they may not be able to dedicate it the necessary time be a secondment to other organizations, be it problems, so on and so forth, because that's what the reality of life is. We have listening ears, first of all. We do encourage all our students to study minimum two 20 career modules with us per academic year. Sorry, per trimester. That totals six modules within an academic year. However, due to circumstances beyond the student's control, they may want to do one module. You're more than happy to accommodate them. Due to circumstances at time, mitigating and uh, extenuating circumstances, students may want to take a break from the studies for three months, for six months, or for a year. We accommodate them with that. They may, through extenuating circumstances, not be able to submit the project or the course book on time, providing they have proof that the circumstances are extenuating and mitigating, we can accommodate them with that. The reality is we are educating professionals and with the best will in the world, no matter how best we plan, at times things don't go according to plan. Those buffers are there. But what I don't want our students to do is to fall into that value of excuses, knowing that those capabilities are there to, to try to compromise themselves. Because ultimately we want our students to complete as quickly as possible, as successfully as possible, as joined up as possible. So that's not a get out clause, folks. That is really for you to have the confidence that if the circumstance becomes mitigating, then you won't be in a compromising situation. Good, excellent. And how do we actually use the study material which is available online? Is there any way that I can um, download it and, um, and print it out? Yes, of course you can. 
everything everything that you have access to you can download everything you can access to can print out some of our students um, like the idea of access uh, printing the course the all the material uh, we take what we don't tend to take our things for granted in uk we're extremely lucky it's very similar to uae um, and africa so on and so forth everybody computer savvy everybody have access to computers so on and so forth and they can at any place anytime anywhere access the data people in uk don't even carry money with themselves anymore with them anymore or you don't even get a taxi you don't even pay a taxi you know it already automatically gets paid via your phone however certain nations at times students first of all they might be old-fashioned like me wanted something with a paper i've got paper everywhere because i love i love the tactile feel of it some individuals may not have access to a computer all the time you might be at work and you might allow yourself an hour or so every day to do some study and the firewalls at your work computer may not allow you to access our material um, in that case what we encourage you to do is to to print out all the information and use it as a see fit however all the coursework has to be submitted online good and um, can you tell me why this particular MBA does not have examinations? I have realized that there are other MBAs out there that do have one or two examinations. Why does yours not have that? Two major reasons. One, if any of the guys who come to study with us at master's level can't work under pressure, then this program is not fit for them. Mass uh, exams are called TCAs, Time Constraint Assessment. The design in, in order to test whether or not somebody can think under pressure. That's why it's constraint. We don't want that. We are based on critical thinking. Our job is reflection, is about really finding a solution to a problem. And what we don't want as a manager, as a leader for today's solution to become tomorrow's problem. To do that, they need to reflect. They need to have a pragmatic approach to what they're doing. And writing a piece of coursework that's given to them allows them to do that and to produce something in a really similar to a management report the majority of the course books to submit or essay format is to, to really illustrate the novel, level of knowledge and understanding helen is very very difficult to test somebody's understanding by just doing an exam and i can only test knowledge and understanding of individuals in a very very small micro level but as once it becomes coursework we stretch them we get them to break things down and preempt and to become a critical proactive thinkers that's why we got what we've got. Okay, and um, I'm taking, or well, I wish to take two modules per trimester. So in your opinion, um, how many hours should I be dedicating per day to my studies? That's a very common question that, that we do get. Yeah. Well, Helen, I wouldn't say day. I've mentioned earlier on, I says, guys, find 15 hours in totality. Some people, some people do half an hour here, half an hour there, but you have to be in the zone for that. At the beginning, you need chunks. You need chunks. I can assure every single one of our fellow students, when they start, in the first couple of weeks, they might spend eight or 10 hours reading. And if somebody goes to them, what you've been reading, so I don't know, it's because it takes time. It takes time for them to really develop their, or remember the way they used to do, do things. I suggest take your own pulse with this. Please, you need average 15 hours per module to really dedicate to this. And you might think, oh my goodness, how, where do I find 15 hours from? It's quite a lot of hours. It's gonna separate you from the person sitting next door to you. You're gonna be a master in your own field. You have a badge of honor after your name. You got to uh, dedicate that average those the average number of hours how to do it is based on your own capabilities and learning styles and thinking styles and i wouldn't i cannot it's such a specific question but individuals personalities of like our oh, fingerprints they're all different 
but we've got enough to guide you. We've got enough ways of academics, reading, academic vocabulary, study skills, so on and so forth. So my first advice to you is the first thing you do is to do the induction material. Go through the induction material with us. That holds your hand, that helps you, that gives you all the tools that's necessary and get into that routine. Come, it's Christmas, Christmas around the corner, everywhere, everybody having fun over here, getting ready for Christmas. Come first week in January, all of a sudden, all the commercials, Christmas commercials on telly stops, and dieting and gym. The gym start the commercial. Why would everybody want to go with the first week of January, go back to gym? It's because they overindulge. It's because they got out of routine of being fit. And when they go to the gym the first week in Christmas, they're all out of breath first night. But second night, they want to cry. I know because I go myself and my chest is burning and I can't breathe. But I know I've got to give it a couple of, couple of weeks in order for my muscles, my body to get into the zone of it. And then it becomes a routine, providing I maintain that sustain, sustainability. So the, how people adopt is very much based on their own capabilities and their own motivation. I've just said this come from my heart, <laughs> Helen. Excellent. Very, very good, uh, very good analogy there. Excellent. Okay. And um, will this degree actually state uh, distance learning uh, on my certificate? No. And is it exactly the same program as if I was a full-time student on campus? The first part of the answer was no. The second is yes. The mode of delivery of your education doesn't give your qualification any less or more value because everything is exactly the same, whether you come here or whether you study from a distance. You have to do the same journey. You have to illustrate the same level of knowledge and same level of understanding, and you have to do the same assessment. And why should anybody get any extra or less point for the different mode of study? Good. Um, I'm a student uh, from Kenya. Uh, welcome. It's great to have you with us this evening. Um, I had completed a few modules uh, at another institution. Um, will you be able to give me credits for what I have completed? As I mentioned earlier on in my presentation, Helen, uh, that's on one individual basis. We have a look. We map the qualification on the module against the learning objectives of our module, and if maps well, we're going to give you exemption. What's the point of teaching you what you already know? Yeah, absolutely. And I'd just like to add to that um, question. If you are going to apply for exemptions, please do ensure that you provide your academic consultant with the learning outcomes of the modules that you have completed. That will make Mamed and his team's uh, job a lot easier to be able to map and uh, to see if you do qualify for those exemptions. Okay, do get that's, in touch with your consultant. Absolutely, sorry for talking over you, Helen. That's so fundamental. And also, one addition to that, Helen, we only allow exemptions, if any, at application level. That's we can't right. allow it once we enroll the student, because we enroll the student based on the learning contract they have with us. So the, sure. they've got to do it right yeah. at the beginning, at application level. Yeah, you're quite correct. So do ensure that you really want those exemptions. We do it at the inception of your of your application. My mate's quite correct about that. Okay, and um, a very important and very interesting question we get all the time is about a student card. Um, a lot of online students feel that they're not part of the university, but uh, does Edinburgh NAPRA provide student cards for online students? Of course. The answer is, of course, you're a student of ours. It is very similar to online banking. Just because you don't go to bank physically or write a check, that doesn't mean you can't have a bank account. Uh, is that plastic? Is that piece of plastic? You know, uh, and yeah, you will be you will be given that student card and that matriculation number that we give you right from the beginning. That matriculation number is for you for life, which is on your student card. And when you hopefully graduate with us, I and mean, when you become an alumni, anytime you want to get in touch with us, all you gotta do is send us a note with that 
which creates a number. You immediately know who you are, what you are. And uh, because you remember, you're a member of the alumni family. It's John Sean Connery, because John Sean Connery is an alumni of us. Always, he uh, became on the DBA. And uh, it's yours, yeah. You are no difference. You're absolutely no difference. Okay. And if I do <laughs> fail on, <laughs> if I do fail an assignment, uh, will you be able to give me some guidelines as to how I can uh, pass that assignment a second time round? First of all, please don't fail, <laughs> because you know you compromise yourself. Of course, uh, you need to know why you failed and where you've gone wrong, and what you need to do to put that right. And uh, at times, it becomes even more challenging for an academic to uh, to having to to make sure the student has failed to explain why they failed and explain why they passed. Um, that's no excuse for us to pass people because we have a very stringent matrix criteria, and you have to illustrate the knowledge and understanding regardless of who you are. But of course, you need that. You need to know what symptoms cause and effect and effect. So yeah. Uh, the long answer is yes. Good. And can I actually change my specialization halfway through my studies? Example, if I initially register for an MBA in project management, can I change to tourism and hospitality halfway through? Yes. There are two conditions. One, you have to, first of all, convince us why, because you got to bear in mind, we give individuals to study specialism, the reasons why they want to do specialism, why they want to do it. So we need a, a solid personal statement. And secondly, if they studied the specialism module, that specialism module no longer counts if they're going to new specialism module. So, for example, if they've done an MSc, MBA in HRM specialism, and they want to shift that to project management, then if they've studied any of those two modules, specialist modules, that doesn't count. So they may have to pay on top as well for those two extra modules. Good. And uh, is there any way that I can get hold of tutors um, other than uh, the online platform? In other words, can I perhaps Skype them or phone them for assistance? Please try to talk to us through our platform. The Moodle platform is the safest platform we have. It's not just about um, us trying to manage you. you got to bear in mind we're in a global environment, global internet connectivity. Government, uh, the governments get tapped into, get hacked, let alone us ordinary people. The platform we have is as secure as humanly possible, so we know nobody can pretend to be who you are, first of all. Second of all, you have your own dedicated email address, that's you, that belongs to you. It's determined with your matriculation number, which you have for life. I personally don't see any reason why students can't go through that platform or through that own personal email address. Of course, there'll be ex extraordinary circumstances where if you give an explanation, we, we, we try the best we can to accommodate you. As far as Skype conversations are concerned, so on and so forth, it becomes important when it comes to doing your project because you, you'll have direct access to your academics whilst you're studying your modules anywhere and your weekly sessions on and so forth. And if you want any extra conversation with them, send them an email via the platform, no problem whatsoever, they come back to you or whenever. If you want a Skype conversation or WhatsApp conversation or whatever, that becomes on, based on requests. And majority of our students, when it comes to writing the project and the thesis, I do it myself. I've got 11 students who supervise the, the, the MBAs and DBAs. And on a regular basis, we have Skype calls because it's good, because you need a dialogue. You need a dialogue. That becomes very important and very popular when you're doing your project. But prior to doing your project, it really, we don't see the need for that. But the answer isn't fully no in capital letters, though. But it has to be a reason for that. 
Um, I do not have uh, the stipulated undergraduate uh, degree uh, for entry into the program, but I do have eight years management experience. Will you be able to accept me onto this program? We need to talk. We need a conversation. Your consultants, Helen, will take the first steps. You know that, you, that you, your team are very, very sleek in knowing exactly what their capabilities are. And if anybody in your team don't want a further conversation, they have it with me, with us, or we talk directly to the students, of course we consider it. You've got to bear in mind, we, we are not in business of taking students' money and setting them up for fall. And if we say no, that's not because we've been difficult, it's because we actually genuinely think that they can't cope with the demands of the program. But quite a number of our students, quite a number of, and they run into hundreds. Bear in mind, we've got thousands of students. They haven't got the relevant uh, educational experience, but they have a substantial amount of managerial leadership experience. Right. Um, and my mate is quite correct. Do get in touch with your academic consultant. Um, they'll be able to advise you as to what documentation needs to be submitted um, so that we can actually get it through to the admissions uh, at the university uh, for review. Okay, so do get in touch with us on that. Um, if I need to take a break in my studies, what is the maximum time that I can take a rest? We can actually uh, suspend studies up to 12 months for a year. Uh, that has to be, again, extreme circumstances. Um, and uh, so that's the maximum we normally, at the time, we allow. Good. And um, with regards to an English requirement, is it imperative that I submit an IELTS? Not necessarily. If you work in an organization where the language they use is English, if your studies, your pre, what the edu education that you have is been in English, then we don't require that. It's, it's purely, uh, IELTS, all IELTS does is just puts that mind address that you can read and write English and you can understand English. It's not just about reading and writing, it's about understanding. As you know, English language is a very, all languages have their own peculiar ways. But one word can have so many different meanings, so on and so forth. And it's having that understanding. So it very much depends on the backgrounds. Again, I think, Helen, your consultants and your team, that's where they come to their own because they tend to, they're extremely good at, we've got every confidence in themselves. They're extremely good at guiding individuals. So, okay, if, if you've done this, then we can accommodate you with that. Yeah. Absolutely, my mate is quite correct. Your academic consultant would need to assess your documentation. So do have a chat to them and they'll be able to advise you of the best uh, option for you to, to meet that English requirement. Um, if I cannot submit an assignment on a due date, what would happen to me and what would happen to my studies? You fail. You fail your coursework unless you had a mitigating circumstance, unless you've told us. <clears throat> and then we give you another opportunity to resit or resubmit. That resubmission, the grade will be capped at P1, at minimum pass. Purely because we don't want to, we have to have a level playing field for everybody. And in order to exercise equality, we've got to do that. But if students, for whatever reason, they can't submit on time, providing they let us know, providing they have a mitigating circumstance, the module leader has a capability to decide him or herself to give extension up to 10 days. Beyond that, it's got to come to us and go to our quality. On both occasions, we need documentations and we need reasons why. I'm under pressure, I'm not having a good time, or my next door neighbor's cat was sick over my iPad or my computer does not add up anymore. Good. Um, and the very last question, which I've, I've managed to group uh, together, is about graduation. Um, so the first thing is, uh, when are graduations really scheduled? And if I cannot attend a graduation, how do I get my degree? 
We have two graduations a year, one at summer, one at autumn, and around about June, July, October, November. And you, every graduate gets an invitation. And with that invitation, if the students are non-European uh, Union students, they can apply for a visa and the letter allows them and even their company, the loved one, to come with them to UK. Please, please come. We normally get quite a good number of our Global Online students coming for the graduation. And it's always fantastic to see them. We have a welcome session even personally for them the night before the graduation. And it's fabulous. If for whatever reason, very similar to our home students, if for whatever reason they can't make it to graduation, then we post the qualification, the certificate to them, to their nominated address. Excellent. Okay, well, that was uh, a very good uh, session. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for your Thanks questions. So I've managed to group them together. Um, do get in touch with us um, with regards to your applications. The program does start on the 13th of January 2020. We would like to try and get those uh, documents into the university as soon as possible and get that all important unconditional offer for you. Um, again, Mamed, it was a great pleasure having you with us and thank you everyone for attending. And uh, I hope that we will see all of you on this program in January. Helen, thank you very much for going through the trouble of arranging this. It's been a real pleasure to see you again. And I do hope we've managed to, to, to answer the questions in a relevant way. And I personally look forward to welcoming every single applicant into our program. Wish you all a good evening. Thank you. Good evening to all.